So my grandfather, he would have been 13 at this time. Right. And according to him, he's already living on his own. Mm. This doesn't completely prove that this is your great-grandmother. Of course. In order to do that, I kind of brought in the search and tried to find her death record. I searched in Tennessee, didn't find any matches. So at that point, I just did a general search of states in the area to see if maybe she had moved someplace else. And I found this record. State of Louisiana. I'm so confused. The story was that she lived in Memphis. I guess I have to let go of stories because stories aren't always true. Nellie May Wiley, name of husband Hugh. So no matter what, this is the same Nellie Wiley who was married to Hugh Wiley. Well, there you go, birthplace Batesville, Arkansas. Name of father, Will Haynes. Of course, the maiden name Haynes and born in Batesville. And <laughs> what are the chances? Yeah, I mean, there's enough evidence here to say that this is definitely your great-grandmother. So, we've got a new family group to explore. No kidding. Nellie Wiley. Place of death, Minden. So where is Minden, Louisiana? So Minden is in northern Louisiana, and it's actually very close to the city of Shreveport. So it's possible that there's more information on Nellie and Hugh Wiley in Shreveport? Likely, yes. You're gonna have to go to Shreveport. Louisiana. That's gonna be a whole new mystery to solve. Holy mackerel. Nellie, 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 Nellie. Thank you. You're welcome and good luck. Thank you. Louisiana is a huge surprise. The stories that have been handed down to me all took place in Memphis. I am gonna go find out what the heck's going on. drive down to Shreveport, my Nelly tides have turned a little bit. I went from sympathizing with her to suddenly asking myself, why is she in Louisiana while her son, my grandfather, was left alone in another state? I want to know why it happened. And I am making assumptions that Nelly not only had terrible taste in men, but also was probably a bit of a bad seat herself. I'm hoping that by learning about this relationship that Nellie had with you, Wiley, I might understand why my grandfather would be left behind. I've asked historian Joseph Spillane to look into their lives here in Louisiana. I want to know what brought them here and what kind of man Hugh Wiley was. So what I was able to do was go through the Shreveport newspapers looking for references to Hugh Wiley. OK. And fortunately, I was able to find something. Well, this is a Shreveport Times newspaper article from October 1925. 1925. 12 alleged dope law violators indicted. T.H. Sweeten, Jack Irwin, and Hugh Wiley. Wow. Jennifer Goodwin is at the Shreve Memorial Library in Louisiana, unraveling the dark secrets in her great-grandmother Nellie's past. She's just discovered that Nellie's third husband, Hugh Wiley, was arrested on drug charges. 40 indictments, 12 of which were for alleged violations of the Harrison Anti-Narcotic Act. Whoa, narcotics. So the Harrison Narcotic Act had been passed by Congress in 1914. Prior to the 20th century, many drugs, including morphine, cocaine, and heroin, were easily accessible and often prescribed by doctors for all kinds of ailments. Hundreds of thousands became addicted to their medications. The 1914 Harrison Narcotics Act put these drugs under federal supervision, and doctors were severely restricted from prescribing them to maintain their already addicted patients. Drug dealers like Hugh Wiley began illegally selling narcotics to now desperate addicts. Wow. So is there anything that ties Hugh to my great-grandmother Nellie at that time? In looking through the newspaper articles for references to Hugh Wiley, mm -hmm. I was able to find one reference to Mrs. Hugh Wiley. Excellent. I've got that here.
woman to be tried in more future. Somehow this is not what I expected. Found in possession of what police said was one and a, one half ounces of morphine, Mrs. Hugh Wiley, 54, was in the city jail here Monday awaiting trial on a federal narcotic charge. That's hard. And she's 54. She'd already had such a sad, sad life. It's one and one half ounces a lot of morphine. Even by today's standards, that's a fair amount of morphine. And it's a good indication the morphine she had in her possession, she intended to sell. And I'm assuming that at this time in history, there were not a lot of female drug dealers. Women, particularly in the South, were overrepresented among drug addicts. Whoa. It wouldn't have been surprising for at least some of them to get involved in distribution. Wow. If this is the thing for which she's caught, God knows what was happening at home. Are there any indictments to be found or anything about her being arrested? I was able to find some documents related to the disposition of her, Whoa. her case. United States Attorney, Shreveport, Louisiana, May 8th, 1934. Dear sir, I wish to be transferred from the Shreveport to the Lake Charles Division in order that I may enter my plea of guilty to violation of the Harrison Anti-Narcotic Act and begin serving my sentence. District Court of the United States, Western District of Louisiana, Mrs. Hugh Wiley, sentenced by the court, be confined in the Federal Industrial Institution for Women, Alderson, West Virginia, for a term of two years, dating from the 21st day of May, 1934. No wonder he didn't want us to know her name. So now what? I mean, we know that she came back here. Right. So she's in Shreveport. Right. And the question is, why are they in Shreveport? Right, why, why, yes, absolutely. Why, why they... did they come here in the first place? Right. One of the things that's interesting about Shreveport is that in the early 1920s, it's actually home to the nation's most significant clinic for narcotic addicts. The records of the clinic still exist. And they're housed not far from here at Louisiana State University. If you like, I can arrange for you to meet with historian Jim Baumol, who can help you look through those records. Well, I should go see them. It's important for me to find out if Nellie was an addict because I think that it is a horrible disease. And if I know that she was an addict, I know my family probably won't because they are of a different time, but I know I can forgive her for the decisions that she made. <laughs>